Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to touch base on an important piece of Power Automate that is Power Automate license and pricing. So if you are a power user, you just use Power Automate to increase your day-to-day -day productivity and work effectiveness, then uh, probably you are not bothered about like what licenses you are using behind the scene. But if you are an architect or a developer, you would like to build the enterprise level scaling, scale the flows using Power Automate, then it's a the licensing piece is the must to uh, something which you need to take a look. So what sort of license you would like to have and what could be your future usage of your flows. And uh, because if you are only the person or you, your team is only creating the flows, then you should be aware about like your per uh, user plan limitations, per flow plan limitations. So we are going to talk about the pricing in simple developers world that the, how you are going to pick the right license for your flows. So I am on the pricing flow. So I believe like uh, people have already taken a look on this automated pricing stuff. So you can simply see like license by user. There is a per user plan that is $15 per month. License by user per with attended RPA that includes the AI builder the 5000 service credits per month where we, uh, the developer can just use the AI builder or the intelligence automation uh, related to the RPA stuff, attended stuff. And third one is license by flow. So that is, that comes as a not single flow license that actually comes as in a bunch of five. So five flows per month, $500. So this piece we are going to talk in detail why this is so and why you should be aware about the limits if you are developing your enterprise level flows and that flows are actually like uh, would would be running in some cumbersome actions that it would definitely require more capacity from Microsoft side to serve all those instances. So this thing we are going to talk about more. So jumping right into the flow comparison, I'll just scroll down so that you can get a brief comparison not to the level of uh, limits and actions but at the high level so per user plan visual analyze process with pro process advices we have these in these two and if we go come down then run cloud flows like every all the licenses having that version I run business process flow and all the licenses have that business flow version the only difference comes up like when the capacity plan for these licenses. So we'll talk about that capacity. So being a developer, being an architect. So there's the crucial piece, which I always keep in my mind, like how, what capacity I should be deciding for my flow environment. So there are three type of uh, flows like you get by default. So one is like if you're getting using your office teacher plan, then by default, all the E3 or E5 users would get a simple one flow license and that license would be Office 365 plan actual limit is 6K and the transition period limit is 10K. So what are these limits? So these are per day limits. So per day limits when, for example, if you are running it 10 flows and 10 flows is having uh, sort of every flow is having 10 actions in that flow and there are a number of 10 or 100 instances that are running daily. So the actual limit, the 4K limit for that uh, uh, actions would be counted cumulatively. So all the flows, all the actions would be considered under that limit. So if you are running a simple office history of plan flows, then all the cumulative flows, all your flows should be run under this 6K. But what is this transition period? This transition period is like the Microsoft has not reached to their entire rollout of their these plans. So they have just uh, kept this transition period limit up till I think like first second quarter of 2022. So the transition period, so that's not hard stop. Like 6K, your flows would not just stop. It may go beyond 7, 8, 10K. But surely after the transition period is done, then you should consider this actual limit as your hard limit. So once all the capacity being analyzed by Microsoft, by your environment, for your environment, then the actual limit should be considered. So you should not keep this 10K in your mind, like uh, for planning your uh, uh, flow capacity, you should be talking about these figures, 6K. So if you are just using normal plan, office year plan, 6K should be your limit. 
So if you are a power user and you are just uh, creating flows for yourself for cutting out uh, some manual work, then you are fine with this limits. But when it comes to a uh, special uh, enterprise level flows, if you are a part of a developer team, where like that flow would require to process uh, a long, long data with a complexity of different conditions and also like calling some services and then processing or transforming that data, then these two things you have to keep in consideration. So first is I will talk, I'll take a second as first power automate per user plan. So it's 15, $15 user per month and actual limit is 40 K. And as I said, like how the limit is being calculated, one flow cross number of actions cross number of instance. For example, one flow, you are having 10 actions and 10 instances running, then 100 K would 100 would be the actions for the, your current environment. So, so you can think of, of, of it like uh, if you are running with per user license and you have created 100 flows, let's say, and 100 flow, let's say running every flow running 100 instances, then 100 multiply 100. So that would actually define your limit. So if you are falling under this limit, so it's fine. But if you're not, then definitely it will get your power automate stage two into, into a throttle state where it will be taking long, long time to execute the, your instances or to uh, run your flow instances. Either it will just get to the hung state, will never complete it. So if it's going beyond the actual limit, so that's why like we go for power automate per flow plan for those flows which are which are required to be running in number of instances. Let's say one flow is required to run 10,000 instances per day. And that is also having complexity of calculation, calculating or number of steps are involved in that flow. Then this is the right piece to pick up. So and my actual environment, I face this because my few flows like four or five, five flows were actually triggering more than 20,000 instances in a day, in a day. And that too, like it was uh, having like 12, 13 complex actions, which were checking the conditions and then manipulating some data and then uh, writing that back to a different SharePoint list. So I picked up this flow for those uh, enterprise flows only and rest of this flow, I kept it only this, the power automate per user plan. So I was good like for if, if a small processing I would like to then power automate plan is uh, writing to 2P. So how to actually check your usage and how to analyze like what usage you would be required or what capacity you would be required in future. So you simply you can go to your flow environment, you can identify your uh, complex flows or the flows which would require uh, number of instances in future to run so you can just open those flows over here you you can see like you we have analytics so in analytics if it's a complex it's a long running flow you can just simply go there so this action would be the key to decide that uh, what would be a flow limit so for example this uh, flow is just consuming 15 actions it's just not one time action this is a cumulative of all the runs. So it can go beyond 10,000 for uh, 20,000 based on your number of instances. And under usage, you can see like what number of uh, running instances or the previous run on daily basis, you can have a look. So based on this usage and the actions, you can decide that what set of uh, license you would require. And it's always in my perspective, it's always recommended to keep at least two bunch of uh, uh, per flow licenses so that if something comes up, then you can just simply use uh, your per flow license uh, rather than using the person who runs the flow. And how to actually set the per flow license in the in the setting on the detail page, you can simply go to add it. And right now you see like this is checking my capacity for my per flow licenses, per flow licenses because I have consumed. So that's why it's just showing it's disabled it. So if you are having 
a capacity defined at your power admin platform level then you would this would be just enabled so you can just set it this power flow and save it that's it but it's a developer perspective of deciding on the license because while uh, making a direct purchase you would not able to make a decision that what uh, sort of uh, package or the license package you would require for flows but a uh, post like uh, your your flows are running for a couple of months then probably you can just go to analytics calculate the actions cal see the usage based on that you can just simply procure your additional licenses so this topic i wanted to cover just because because i had this issues i had my this uh, power platform went to into throttle mode because of this usage and the number of actions so i thought like if i am facing this then probably it could be a right thing for you it could be a right thing to know detail about this pricing model and the action model for you as well so that's it for today if you like the video please do subscribe and drop your comments thanks